Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, I kept you waiting long enough. Finally, we're going to continue with the Army of Satan series. Today, part 6, Reloaded, the Cabinet of Satan. How does the Illuminati system work? by rational believer guys i said it before i want to make everybody happy here therefore my reaction playlist is very very long however yes we're going to continue with the army of satan series of course step by step just do me the favor if you enjoy this series leave the thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already please do so guys with no further ado let's have a look all right guys and for copyright reasons unfortunately i will have to read the translation of the quran surah because salam network yes hello salam network is copyright striking this channel he said i am better than him you created me from fire and created him from clay Allah said then get out of here for indeed you are expelled and indeed upon you is my curse until the day of recompense he said, My Lord, then reprieve me until the day they are resurrected. Allah said, So indeed, you are of those reprieved, until the day of the time well known. Iblis said, By your might, I will surely mislead them all, except among them your chosen servants. Allah said, I swear by the truth and I speak the truth, that I will surely fill hell with you and your followers all together. So people have been talking about Iblis, where is he? His throne. The Prophet ﷺ has reported, you know, in a very sound hadith, which is in the Muslim, reported by Jabir, that Arsh uh, al-Shaytan, Arsh al-Iblis, al al ma Arsh al-Iblis, al al ma The throne of Iblis, the throne of Shaytan, this is the master of Shaytan. The master of Shaytan, his throne is on water. Where? What water? What ocean? Allahu Ta'ala A'lam But There are certain indications That could maybe tell us Where his throne could be There's another hadith Where it says Innahu This is also in, in Muslim Innahu Inda barzakh il ma Inda barzakh il ma What's a barzakh? A barzakh It's like a partition You know when you have The sweet water And the salty water You know whereby the sweet water does not merge with the salty water that's a barzakh that's a partition in this hadith he says he is on this barzakh his, ash, his throne is on this barzakh his throne is on this barzakh which is again somewhere in, 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 a, in an ocean but now I want to bring something up here have you heard of the Triangle of Bermuda. What happens sure. there? I mean, something that nobody could still explain. Nobody knows. Flight 19. Have you heard of Flight 19? Yep. That disappeared. All these flights and ships that, that disappeared. The Scary. Tiger 1948. You know, um, they got the black box. They hear the guy saying, I, uh, I see something. I see something. I don't know what it is. And nobody could explain. I see something. I don't know what it is. And then they said, okay, we send in help. It's been recorded. It, you can play it. it. You can find it on the internet. Yeah. Uh, we're sending help, we're sending help. Is it okay? And then the guy comes back and he says, No, I'm, I cannot control the plane. I cannot control the plane. I don't know what's this. I don't know what it is. And then he goes back again and he says, Don't send nobody. Don't send no one. And nobody can help. Not send no one. And then he just, after some time, disappears. It's not only one flight, but there's so many flights that disappeared and ships that disappeared off of this, this Bermuda. So some said, that, Does that mean that maybe the throne of Shaitan is there? Might be sure. Allah Ta'ala A'lam, but it could be. It's really scary, man. According to the hadith reported by Jabr, Iblis places his throne upon water and he sends out his army for creating dissension. The closest to him in rank are the greatest at causing tribulations. The nearest army of Iblis are the jinn who are directly in contact with him, since Iblis himself is a jinn and they take the command and give the report of their activities. 
his minions, they're reporting back. Sure. And these Jinn are communicating with the second degree army, which are human beings, the Illuminati network. Through this network, he, Iblis, can accomplish his global agendas. Sure, absolutely. And this is what you ultimately have to realize when you climb the conspiracy ladder, so to speak. Because at first you find out about the banking cartels, maybe. You follow the money, so you start seeing who is printing the money, who is behind the banks. But then it goes deeper down the rabbit hole. Freemasons, Illuminati, the elite and what not. Once you realize that they have all the money in the world, you wonder why they do it. Those evil, sinister motivations of those people, quote unquote, if you can even call them people, if you really get to the bottom of things, you will find out that it is a spiritual battle, a spiritual battle between good and evil. This reminds me of the passage in the Bible. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. To me, this is an absolutely amazing explanation because we are really not fighting against people. Look at the acts that those people commit. Those people are possessed. You don't see any humanity left in them. So we are truly facing evil, truly fighting the devil. Let's look into this. The basic Illuminati structure and its relation to cooperating satanic bodies. So at the bottom, you have the original Bavarian Illuminati, the novice level, which is correct because the Illuminati really has been started in Germany, in Bavaria. Next to it, you have the novice witch, today's Illuminati with sixth or six lifetime positions, special positions. You have the knights, and you have the knights of East and West. Then you have the next level, fellow craft, mine revel, craft practicing witch, patriarchs, and the knights of pelican and eagle. One step further, you enter the master of Illuminatus, minor three, or the master witch. And on this level, you have the Skull and Bones leadership, of which George Bush Sr. and George Bush are members of, and of course, the Knight Templar. You can see that the Black Brotherhood encompasses all of these levels. Then rising up, we enter the Illuminatus Major, the Sisters of Light, the Asmodeus or Neophyte level. And on the Skull and Bones side, we have the CFR or the Grand Inspector. Rising up in the Illuminati level, we enter level 5. In the Witch level, we are at the Mother of Darkness and the Grand Master. Again, in the Skull and Bones portion here, we enter the Round Table groups or the Perfect Pontiff. And basically, so it continues. The Illuminati level raises to Prince level, Priest level and whatnot. The witches, they raise to Grandmother until they enter the special council and committees. And ultimately, it all merges at the top. This is the elite, so to speak. He calls them the Great White Brotherhood. This is a 0.000 percentile of all of those people. The special positions are dedicated to the White Brotherhood members who are owning the higher Masonic degrees, including kings, philosophers, priests, special counsel and committee. Yeah, I don't think that they are really up there, those guys. They're just puppets themselves. The hierarchy level is dedicated to the Red Brotherhood members who are owning the intermediate Masonic degrees, including Pilgrim Society, Prince, Roundtable Groups, Grand Inspector, Perfect Pontiff, etc. And this is the Anarchy level. The Anarchy level is dedicated to the Black Brotherhood members who are owning the lower Masonic degrees, including Skull and Bones leadership, craft practicing, witch, knights, templars, etc. Yeah, what I just said. The bushes. It's interesting that this video is still up. We're gonna get shadow banned yet again. <laughs> yep, they own all the corporations. What do you think? Who is behind the system, the New World Order? Ultimately, as I said, Satan. Who what is ultimately behind this? Uh, or at least uh, the depth of the rabbit hole got so far. Well, they ain't for a start. Because they're just here today, gone tomorrow, people who are just puppets of a system that's here yesterday, today, tomorrow, and the next day. Exactly. It never um, ends. It's not him. I don't care if he's supposed to be the most powerful man in the world. He ain't. He's another bloody glove puppet. 
and anyone in that job the same applies to. It's not him either. Here nope. today, gone tomorrow, uh, presidents and leaders who are replaced by other leaders. But the thing, the system, the direction goes on because there's something behind that that's pushing that direction on. And nor even is it the corporations. They're still at the level of playing out the control. Yep. It's not actually at the point of creating it. It's not the origin. It's not people sitting around tables. They're still at the point of playing it out. Correct. You can go into the shadows and you can get closer to where it's coming from, but you're still at the play out level. You go even deeper into the rabbit hole, really deep into the web. And that's where you find people like the Rothschilds and such like. You don't see us, but we control your life. But there's levels beyond that where it's coming from. But where is it? This reality that we're experiencing has been hijacked by a force that some ancient people call archons, but there's different names right across the ancient world for the same force, the same entities. And um, all over the world you see this. Uh, in um, the Far East, Central America and other places, they're known as the serpent gods. The Zulus call them the Chittahuri, the children of the serpent. They're the Anunnaki in, uh, in Sumer, where Babylon, now Iraq. They're our snake brothers to the Hopi people of um, North America. They're the star people, many, it's many the snake. Uh, examples of that. They are the demons of Christianity. Which yet again is symbolized as a snake. To the Gnostics, they are archons. And to the Islamic and pre-Islamic world, they're called the jinn. Yep. And in their prime form, they are energetic uh, in, in nature. The, the, the uh, classic Satan is called the deceiver and the demon of demons, as this demiurge is called the Archon of Archons. Yes, absolutely correct. And this is what I want to point out with that Bible verse, because we're really not wrestling against flesh and blood. If you look into it, as he said correctly here, all of those people will die. Of course, they're fantasizing about immortality. They believe that they're going to transcend humanity ultimately, but all of them will die. They have the false promise of the shaitan, so to speak. And at the bottom of this, it's only him and his army, dark entities that control people. And yet again, guys, I have to say this, I saw it on my spiritual experiences myself. Those those entities truly get entangled with people when they see that somebody is susceptible, somebody is corrupt, they will possess that person and they will use that person for their agenda. Soon that person will fall into further corruption, soon that person will get sick, soon that person will die and then they simply shift the host and take another person. So the force behind the system is Iblis and he sends out his army for creating dissension. The closest to him in rank are the greatest at causing tribulations. Yep, exactly. This is essentially the army of Satan. And when they come back to report about their activities, one of them says, I have done this and this. Satan says, you have done nothing. The shaitan, he sits with his shayateen, they're giving him reports. So one shaitan says, I made this man commit zina. And shaitan, he just hears him. This is Bukhari and Muslim, so it's a sound hadith. And he, the shaitan, another shaitan comes and says, I made this man steal. I made this guy do this. I made this guy do that. I made this woman do this. I made this woman make, you know, remove her hijab. I made, so they keep on, you know, submitting their reports to him. And then one shaitan, one guy comes and say, This jinni will stand up and say, Today I was able to separate a husband and a wife. You know what Shaitan will say? You are my man. Come out. And crowns him. Hadith Sahih Muslim, Hadith Jabir. Reflect upon this. Smoking weed is haram. Killing is haram. Adultery is haram. Name any sin you want. Divorce is not haram. Divorce is not haram. Why is he so excited? He's so happy about divorce. Why? Your enemy always likes to do what? Divide and conquer. Now he is able to divide the first unit in the community. Because look at your community. The community is made of what? 
units. Families. Uh, imagine a wall, bricks. The family is the first brick in the community. Yeah. The first unit. First you have the family. Next to it you have another family. Next to it you have another family. Then you have a street. Then you add another street, another street. Then you have a village. Then more streets, more houses. You have a city that continues further to a societal level, to a country level, and then ultimately to a global level. If you corrupt the family structure, you corrupted everything. Society will fall. It becomes then easy to divide the community, divide a congregation. Yes. He has long-term plans. You can't conquer as long as you are united. Correct. But united under truth, not falsehood. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. The Army of Satan series truly reminds me of my journey into the rabbit hole 15 years ago, or maybe even longer, when I found out about the Freemasons, the Illuminati, etc., etc. But in the end, this journey, if done correctly, will lead you to God, because you will understand that you're not fighting against humans. As I said already, those people are demons. They're just empty vessels. The same way that our body is a vessel for the human soul. We are filled with a human soul with a purpose given by God. Those people deny the purpose of God and they are filled by Satan. They are following his footsteps. And this is why I personally don't hate anybody. I know that people will start shouting, oh, hypocrisy. What if somebody breaks into your house and tries to kill your family? Don't you hate that person? No, I don't hate that person. I will defend myself. I will defend my family, of course. I will kill that person potentially, but I don't hate that person. Hate is an emotion that comes straight from the devil, and I don't subscribe to the devil. I subscribe to God. I have nothing but love for his creation. Of course, I hate the sin, and I will discern between what is right and wrong, but I don't hate the person. I simply see a person that fell victim to their circumstances. If you look at child for example, a staggering amount of those people has been in childhood themselves. So ultimately the victim becomes the predator. I don't hate that person. Of course we need to persecute that person and yes I am for the death penalty. Of course we need to keep society in check but nevertheless I have zero hate for that person because I do not know their background. I do not know what brought them there and ultimately if we look at all of those facets we can find Satan in the background. Satan made them do it. It's never the person. Check out this clip. So sad for you that uh, you have to be in this situation. I wish I could help you as I help my son to be a good citizen. If Salahuddin were to be here, if he alive, he will forgive you. That's the way he was. That's the way he is. I'm not angry at you for being part of hurting my son. I'm angry at the devil. I blame the devil, the devil, who misguiding you and misleading you to do such a horrible crime. I forgive you on behalf of Salahuddin and his mother. Thank you. I'm sorry about what happened today, but I do applaud you because it takes a powerful man to know that somebody has hurt them and do what you get up there and say what you just said. I have a child. She's four. And I can imagine the hurt, the pain from the Just tell us what I can do. Isn't that truly powerful? I simply want to remind you guys to always focus on your real enemy, which is Satan. When you see other people, don't feel hate in your heart against those people. Don't judge those people. Focus on the real enemy. Focus on the real battle between good and evil. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.